part a. Given that g of x is between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, sketch the graph of g of x where it's equal to arc tan x. Arc tan x is the inverse function of tan x, which I know how to draw easily. So first of all, let me just draw a little graph of tan x where it's between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. So my tan x graph would look like this. But like I say, arc tan is the inverse of that. So it's going to be a reflection in the line y equals x. So if I reflect this graph in the line y equals x, it's now going to look something like this. Where my new asymptotes would actually be horizontal asymptotes because remember the range and the domain flip so let me draw up a neater proper version of my graph now so here are my axes let me draw my asymptotes in so i've got an asymptote here at positive pi over two and i've got a another asymptote here at minus pi over 2. And the graph of arc tan looks like this. So yeah, that's my answer for part A. Part B. Find the exact value of um, x for which 3g of x plus 1 equals pi. So first let's substitute the x plus 1 into the g of x function. So into the g of x function here. So that would give me arc tan of x plus 1. We have three of those. So 3 arc tan of x plus 1 minus the pi equals zero. I'm then going to add pi to both sides. So 3 arc tan x plus 1 equals pi. Divide both sides by 3. So arc tan of x plus 1 equals pi over 3. To remove the arc tan function to get x by itself, I'm going to do the inverse of arc tan which is tan. So taking tan of both sides, I get x plus 1 equals tan of pi over 3. And tan of pi over 3 is root 3. So I can say that x plus 1 equals root 3. Therefore, x is equal to root 3 minus 1. And that's my answer to part B. We are then told that the equation arc tan x minus 4 plus a half x equals 0 has a positive root at x equals alpha. I need to show that alpha is between 5 and 6. <clears throat> so let's substitute that into our function. So if I do arc tan... 5 minus 4 plus a half times 5. Let me put that into my calculator. So arc tan 5 minus 4 plus 5 over 2. I get minus 0 0.126. So it's a negative. If I now do the same thing with 6 arc tan 6, so tan inverse of 6, minus 4 plus a half times 6. Just a quick reminder that when we do the arc tan on your calculator, you're actually typing tan inverse. They're the same thing. Uh, when we type that into our calculator, we get positive 0.4. 
So crucially, there is a sign change. So I'm now going to write the sentence that we usually write. So we say sign change in the continuous function. Therefore, there must be a root in the interval 5 to 6. Right. Part uh, D. We're told that the iterative formula xn plus 1 is equal to 8 minus 2 arc tan xn can be used to find an approximation for alpha. Taking x0 is 5, use this formula to find x1 and x2, giving each answer to three decimal places. So to find x1, I'm going to substitute 5 here. So I would type into my calculator 8 minus 2 times tan inverse of 5, which gives me 5.253, to three decimal places. To find x2, I am now going to do the similar thing, but instead of substituting 5, I'm going to use the answer. So 8 minus 2 times tan inverse of the answer, or the 5.253. And it's going to give me as the x2 is 5.235 to three decimal places.